everyone, and welcome to Police Off the Cuff. These are real crime stories. And today we have uh, an excellent, actually a frequent flyer. He's been on Police Off the Cuff, but he's never been on real crime stories. And he's sort of a legendary detective. His name is Mike Heinrichs. And he spent most of his career in the 6-7 squad. He retired out of Brooklyn South Homicide. And uh, Mike happens to be one of the most highly decorated uh, detectives in the history of the New York City Police Department. I know everyone says that. I was just reading a book about the mafia cop, Louis Ippolito, and he said he was. He had about 16 mm. medals, you know, if, unless he counted the 14 homicides he did, you know. <laughs> but anyway, Mike actually is one of the most highly decorated detectives in New York City Police Department history. Two combat crosses, two medals of valor, and over 200 department citations. But that's not what this is about today. Today, this is about a story that Mike's going to tell about a homicide that he investigated when he was a member of Brooklyn South Homicide. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Okay, Bill, how you been? Nice to see you again. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. I All see right. you got your buff shirt on. Yes. <laughs> Gotta break it out once in a while. <laughs> You're buffing out a little bit. That's all right. Yeah. No oh, more free drinks. No more free drinks, but, you know, uh, <laughs> what can you do, right? So what are you going to talk to us about today, Mike? All right. Um, well, like I said, I spent a lot of time between the 6-7 and, and Brooklyn South Homicide. I had um, quite a few cases. I caught, you know, well over 100 myself, but um, most of the cases were pretty much the, the same theme ran through them. You know, just maybe the, t you know, the time and the names were, you know, it were different, but every, every much, you know, the case was pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but this case, um, I had in the 6-1 in 2002, and um, it was a little bit of a different twist. Um, what happens is, is that, um, just to give you a quick overview, um, uh, we find a body on the beach. I'll start off on the, I guess I should start off on the beginning and then yeah, sure. we'll just go through and we'll just say, like I said, it's a little bit, a little bit different than, uh, your usual street type case. Okay. So it, it starts off, um, like on a quiet Sunday, you know, um, usually when you do the turnaround and nothing happens in the morning, you feel you're good, you're good for the day. Well, you're going to watch football outside. that day or baseball. You're going to watch some yeah. kind of sport that day, right? But um, uh, this, it didn't happen. We got a call from the 6-1 squad um, that had a DOA that washed up on Plum Beach. Uh, Plum Beach is a, a parking area uh, on the eastbound side of the Bell Parkway. Um, now you get a lot of, um, you know, guys that do the uh, surf, windsurfing and stuff there. But back then it was uh, an open air or sex market. Um, all was types of things gay, going on. Gay sex area? Or? Gay sex, straight sex, voyeurs, uh, whatever, whatever you wanted, um, you could pr probably find it there. Yeah. Um, but in any event, we got called, you know, by the squad. We went out and met the squad, and we found uh, we were directed to a, a body. Well, Mike, um, let me just let, let me just stop you there for one second, okay. and just to explain to our listeners in New York City, the squad, the numbered squad officially catches the homicide it means it's their responsibility yes that's the companion detective from the homicide squad works the case with the numbered squad till the case is solved or that's correct or we're basically an assisting uh you know unit myself and my partners will go with the case detective and the squad and work together uh to bring it to a successful conclusion right and it's sort of i think the rules were sort of meant that they didn't want the homicide squad making the arrest because that would cause a lot of animosity with the detectives and the normal squad, the numbered squads, who don't always get a chance to catch as many homicides as the actual the homicide squad. Yes, yeah. and that's the case with the 6-1. It is a fairly slow command in regards to homicides. Right. Although they, they have, you know, they had their share. And uh, one thing about the 6-1 squad, no two cases were the same. Now, what, what specific um, area of the city is the 6-1? Um, it covers Sheepshead Bay, okay. uh, which is mostly a Russian or East European neighborhood. Um, it's got some Italians left over, and it even has a set of projects. So it's a middle uh, class to upper middle class. Uh, yes, pretty much so, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we start off where we're directed to the body. I meet the case detective. Her name is uh, Michelle Gerlich. Uh, she was a young, you know, young detective in the squad, and this was going to be her first murder. Wow. Um, <laughs> now... With people that wash up um, or floaters, a lot of times, um, you know, they're not homicides. 
You turn out they're suicides, they're accidentals, or they just wind up as being cuppies. Um, but this case was uh, going to be on. Mike, just, to, just for the lingo, a cuppy stands for circumstances undetermined pending police investigation. Correct. Someone from Wyoming is not going to know what a cuppy is. No, I guess not. <laughs> Yeah, it's basically we have a dead body. We don't know what happened. We don't know what the hell happened. If the Emmy can't help us and say uh, X, Y, and Z happened, then we don't know what happened. So it's a fancy acronym. That yes, pretty much, yes. Okay. Uh, but in any, like, again, this case was not going to be um, either one of those. It was clearly a homicide. Um, the body uh, appeared to be a young male black, and he was bound and wrapped in uh, garbage bags. And he had washed up on shore. Um, I was found by a dog walker. And just real quick, I just want to say, and Donnie, Harbor was not involved, just so he knows. My friend Donnie likes to tell Harbor stories, and <laughs> he's going to try to jump in on this one. <laughs> no Harbor involved. involved but we didn't. Uh, it was a, strictly a dog walker. So, um, <laughs> so we had that. Um, and, um, you know, basically what we do at that point, we don't, we don't really do anything. We wait for the medical examiner investigator to come. We don't want to disturb any of the, uh, you know, uh, the clothing that the person may have or, or the, the knots tied to bound, bind him or, or, or whatever. And actually, so, there could be um, fingerprints on if they were, it was wrapped in hefty bags that possibly yes. could be. And I also, mean, if there was tape, duct tape used, right. there could so, be fingerprints on, in that also. Right. So, I mean, we were able to see in the bag, I guess, what the, you know, what the, it was in the ocean for, we believed at least, uh, you know, you know, at least a month or so, who knows, really, it's hard to tell. Uh, but we were able to see in the bag, but the medical examiner investigator came and did a little preliminary search and told us that it appeared that he was stabbed several times. The person was stabbed several times, um, but we're going to leave it alone and we're going to take the body back to the medical examiner's office and tomorrow we're gonna to do an autopsy. Um, so we pretty much, uh, that's what we do. Um, so with that, I mean, this case, you know, it's, it's going to be a homicide, but it's not officially a homicide yet. It's on a Sunday. So there's really no um, panic or pandemonium as you would have with a, a, a shooting or a fresh case that just happened. Right. You know, it is, you know, nobody's calling from the, you know, the headquarters, nobody wants answers to questions you know, uh, that, that, you know, we don't have yet. So we have a little bit of time to, um, to do on a session. Sunday afternoon in the six one, no one's, uh, no, all the, all the panic people are on They're still off. Yeah, yeah. They're enjoying their weekend while we're doing it. So, um, so, uh, we pretty much wrap it up for the day. You know, we do a couple of, you know, little, you know, little fluff things, maybe check it out a little bit. Anything that jumps off the squad, have anything going? No, no, no. So um, we wrap it up, and the next day we go to the ME's office, um, where the ME conducts uh, an examination of the body. And what did you we're attend? Told, did, did you attend the autopsy? Yes, I did. Okay. In New yes, York City, did. so uh, listeners also know, uh, the homicide catching detective and the companion case of homicide are expected to attend the autopsy because if they make an arrest in this case down the road, they're going to have to testify. May be, may be asked very technical questions by yes. the defense attorney. So, yeah. So, yes. Uh, never got used to that part of it, but yeah. Again, you know, like I said, I had said in the past. You know, we talk about oh, this is a great case, great case, but you have a a, a dead human being to start yeah. off the case, yeah. and you have to you know absorb all that in its entirety and deal with that part of it also. But um, so we have the we have the examination done, and the ME tells us that. Um, our victim well, wasn't uh, stabbed. He was shot numerous times and it appears that it was done with a high powered uh, rifle. Um, there's no ballistics uh, recovered in the body and there's no identification that would lead us to believe, um, you know, who this person is. Now, um, with the, uh, w was there no ballistics because the, the, uh, the rounds went in and out? Yes, apparently, yes. Okay. So, with that, the, the other thing the ME told us is that uh, she didn't, she thought that the body was in the water for a, a, quite a long time, um, which could be, you know, oh, when did you, you know, when did somebody last see him till today, you know, type of thing. You know, you never really, it's a lot that goes into the science of that water temperature, 
how he was dressed, how tight he was wrapped up and stuff like that. Um, so we move on with that. And um, so now we, you know, that she's officially going to declare it a homicide. So we're going to move along with the investigation. And the first thing we do, which really in a case like this, these cases are, um, they're difficult, but uh, we got a lot of breaks with, with, with this case. And the first big break came when we identified the, uh, the victim. Right. That's, uh, that's one of the most important things in a homicide investigation because that'll yes. open up a lot of doors to when, mm -hmm. where, who, what, how, and why, right? Yes, that's, that's, it is most, I mean, now you have a person, you can, you can put a name to the person, you can interview friends, family, you know, do it back. And this is a case where, unlike other cases, you would sort of work it backwards instead of like moving on, trying to chase people down and gather witnesses. You're going back to square one and trying to build a, a timetable from when he was last seen to when this may have happened to him. Was there a missing persons case on this? On the yes, that was another break we had. Um, his family, his mom and sister had, uh, you know, prepared a missing person report out on him, um, which uh, was was good in a, in a way that we knew that there was family that was looking out and, and, you know, knew, had some, obviously some background to make a report out thinking something suspicious probably happened to him. It also I'm showed sure sort of a timeline, a little bit of a timeline. Yes, well, you know what it is too, I'm sure they had a hard time making the report um, you know, in the beginning, you know, it's a 20 something year old male, you know, right, from right. the projects. I could just see the guy in the, uh, 124. Room yeah. Say, no, nah, he'll be back tomorrow. He left or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we had a starting point. We had a big starting point and, and the point was to go to, um, to mom and the sister initially to, um, drop the bomb or give them the bad news. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, to ask them about the missing person report and say what they, you know, see what they could tell us about when they last saw them and, and that. Mm -hmm. um, so we went over to the apartment. The victim lived in, uh, his name was Alex. He lived in an apartment building or a housing project, actually, in Sheepshead Bay. Mike, can I just stop you for one second? And okay. just, just for, again, for our listeners, what okay. you are explaining right now is something known as, in the homicide business, as a victimology. And what you're doing is you're studying not just studying, but you're uh, developing a uh, background on the victim. Yes. And, and how did this happen to the victim? What was the victim? Right. Who was he hanging with? Who's his family? What's right. his, does he work? What's his, his uh, financial, his drug history, his sex history? All that stuff is uh, part of the victimology. Right. And also the fact where he may have been a victim at some point, you yes. know, making out a complaint himself on someone else. But we did look into his background. He had some, you know, uh, brushes with the law, but nothing crazy. Nothing jumped off that could give us a motive. Wow, he's into this or he's into that or he screwed this guy or this guy was, you know, this happened and that happened. We really didn't have anything like that at that point. Um, but uh, we were able to go again to meet the family and speak to his parents or actually to his mom and his, um, his sister. Um, and as I said, they lived in a housing project in Sheepshead Bay, the Nostrum Sheepshead houses. Um, when we spoke to mom, mom told us that um, she had last seen him about two months prior. Now, this was in February when we got the call and found the body. Mm -hmm. um, but mom and, the sis and sister had last seen him somewhere around um, the end of December, around Christmas time. Um, and... They, 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 they told me that, listen, this guy, they call him White Boy John. He's a white kid that comes from Gerritsen Beach. He came over to the apartment and left with, with Alex. And that was the last time we saw either one of them. And we don't know what happened. And um, so we asked him a little bit, you know, like, well, who, who's White Boy John? Who is this guy? Is he a friend, foe? Or, well, he's this type of guy. He comes from Gerritsen uh, Beach, which is a neighborhood near Sheepshead Bay, Marine Park in that area. Mm -hmm. And um, he apparently is a, is a white, white guy, white kid that comes to the projects and is trying to front himself as being like a, a player or a gangster. He's in there, he's trying to get into the drug business and, right. you know, and this, that, and the other thing. While other people are trying to get out of the ghetto, he, he's trying to get in. Um, <laughs> go fit. Too much MTV, maybe. I, I don't know. Funny, right? 
Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. People try to get out. He's trying to get in. Just trying to get in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we have White Boy John now as the person who was last seen with the victim. Now that, that's his street nickname, White Boy John? Yes. That's yes. what they call him in the projects, right? Yes, everybody referred to him as White Boy John. Okay. Sort of stuck out over there. Um, so, all right, so now we have, you know, an approximate date he went missing, and we have a person he was last seen with. Um, so it's, it's a start now. Um, it's a start to say, okay, well, who's white boy John? Well, you know, where's he from? What's it, what's his, you know, background look like and, and see if we can come up with something. Now, um, the first thing we do is, uh, just give me a second. It's been 20 something years. So I got to, uh, <laughs> you gotta fresh up on this case. <laughs> How could you not seconds. remember every single thing? Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> yeah. So the first, the first thing we actually get going is, is, um, people in the projects or people uh, known to the department, let's say, um, drop us a little uh, information and it's loose and unverified, it's hearsay, but we're getting a theme that, um, you know, the same thing that, that mom had said, white boy John is this type of guy, he's a bit of a putz, but you know, he's in there trying to fit in and all this. And, and there's a rumor circulating that him and our victim Alex did a burglary of a drug dealer who at that present time uh, was on Rikers Island. And that white boy, John, had mentioned, uh, you know what, I, I didn't do it, Alex did it, but I'll take care of Alex on behalf of the drug dealer right. in jail. So it, it was coming up with a little bit of a, you know, a motive, or, or it was sort of the same thing with mom. Here he's just trying to fit in, trying to tell everybody, uh, you know, that he's going to take care of business for the kingpin who's in, the, you know, in uh, or on Rikers Island and stuff. So, mm -hmm. Um, it, it is a little fluff, but it doesn't bring us any anywhere near uh, to where we need to be as far did, as... Did White Boy John have any kind of a significant criminal history? He did. He did. What was Mostly uh, nickel and dime street stuff. Um, but um, his, his, his actually his most recent collar, which, which is the one we really look into, was um, the one that put us on the track uh, of the case. Uh -huh. um, we had learned his um, last arrest um, was in, um, he was arrested at the Golden Gate Hotel in Sheepshead Bay. That sounds um, like a really five-star hotel. Nicole. Yeah, a lot of, uh, <laughs> lot, it's what, you know, it's, it's got everything there. It's one of those places where you would bring your, uh, your, your other than significant other, yeah. you know, is everything from murder to drug dealers to, you know, getting a call, get over here with a cuff key, I'll explain later type yeah. stuff. <laughs> You know, it's one of those places. Yeah. Um, but when we start to look into his arrest, and particularly that last arrest, the first thing we notice is that it, it's it's within days of uh, him going to um, Alex's house. And, you know, Alex, you know, it's in the time frame from when Alex went missing with him uh -huh. and when he got arrested. Uh, we couldn't pinpoint the exact date or time, but um, he was in... Um, you know, a few days, appeared a few days after he left with Alex. Mm -hmm.